This video explains the difference between deadheading daylilies and pruning daylilies. I'm Laura from Garden Sanity, and learning how to deadhead daylilies, especially reblooming varieties, can help prevent dealing with those dreaded seed pods during the blooming season. Deadheading versus pruning. When you deadhead a daylily, you're primarily removing the dead flowers from the plant, including its ovary, which I'll explain in a minute. When you prune a daylily, you're primarily removing dead grass leaves, any seed pods, and trimming back the plant to a smaller size. So that's the main difference between deadheading and pruning. Now, let's dive a bit more deeply into all of this. Why are my Stelladora daylilies not blooming? Years ago, I thought that as long as I gently pulled and removed the dying Stelladora flowers, I was good. Remove those flowers and supposedly more flowers will pop up. I originally wanted Stelladora daylilies because they bloom all season long, but mine weren't doing so after the initial flush of flowers. And they were planted in full sun, which Stelladora daylilies prefer. So why weren't they blooming? Because I wasn't completely removing the spent flowers from the plant. Instead of getting a new flush of blooms, I was getting seed pods forming where the flowers once were. When seed pods begin to form, the plant will focus its energy on developing those seed pods. The plant's energy is no longer focused on producing any flowers. The daylily plant thinks the growing season is over, so it's time to work on producing seeds for next year. Thus, no more flowers appear. So the solution to this is to do two things. First, remove the seed pods immediately, and secondly, Learn how to properly deadhead the spent blooms of your daylilies to avoid getting seed pods in the future. But Laura, my neighbor, my mother, my cousin, somebody, everybody, they never deadhead their daylilies and the daylilies bloom nonstop. And isn't that how it always is? <laughs> There's always gonna be a gardener who never does anything to their plants and those plants are thriving. Well, this video is for the rest of us. To remove the seed pods, use hand pruners or garden snips. Snip off the seed pods and their stem as far down as you can go. The base of the stem is usually hidden by the daylily leaves. Now these leaves are pretty resilient, so you can move them around without worrying you're going to damage the plant. If you just snip off the seed pods near the top of the stem, those remaining stems will soon dry up and turn tan or brown. It's not a big deal, but you probably want to cut them out with the seed pod to avoid another chore of removing the brown stems later. Removing the seed pods will be a pain to do if there are a lot of them, but once those seed pods are removed, your daylilies will refocus their energy back to producing flowers. Pretty soon, you'll have those wonderful blooms back. So here's where I talk about the ovary of the plant. <laughs> Stick with me here. Usually, when we see spent blossoms on our garden flowers, we know how to remove them, whether with garden snips, pruners, or even by just pinching them off with our fingers. Doing so prevents those flowers from going to seed, which helps the plant continue to focus its energy on producing more flowers. You want the plants producing more flowers instead of diverting their energies to developing seeds and or seed pods. The same is true for daylilies. Here's a typical Stelladora daylily stem to use as an example. Here you see a full bloom flower, a spent flower shriveled up, and two flower buds yet to open. If you tug on the spent flower, it will easily come off. However, you're left with the flower's ovary, which is small and can appear like it is just part of the stem. So you need to also remove the ovary, otherwise that tiny ovary, which I've labeled for you here, will turn into a large seed pod. To properly deadhead daylilies, I find it easiest to gently grab the spent flower by the bottom, where you can feel the ovary inside of the thin blossom covering it. Gently snap off the complete spent flower with its ovary and throw it away. That's all there is to it. Once you get the hang of deadheading daylilies the right way, this becomes an easy chore you can do regularly. And if you deadhead daylilies regularly, you'll prevent those giant seed pods from developing in the first place. 
Once you snap off the spent blossom with its ovary, a new stem or flower will not form in that exact spot. Instead, once all of the flowers on that particular stem have finished blooming, the stem will just turn brown and die. When you've removed all of the spent blooms on a particular stem, cut back that stem as close to the base of the plant as possible. I usually try to at least cut those stems down into the daylily leaves so they aren't as visible when they begin turning brown. The good news, however, is that once those stems are brown, if you miss a few of them, they're super easy to pull out of the plant without needing pruners. New stems, with new buds and flowers, will continue to form from the base of the plant. I prune my daylilies twice a year. In the fall, I do the main pruning and clean up for the winter months. In the spring, I'll do a secondary cleanup from the winter and some optional pruning if needed. First, grab those dead leaves around the outer base of the plant and gently tug. They should come right off. They look like dried grasses, don't they? Next, use your fingers as a rake and comb up from the center base of the plant to remove the rest of the dead leaves. Look at this ugly mess I removed from just one plant. That's a lot. Using your hand pruners, start trimming the green leaves down. I hold a bunch with one hand, then cut them with the other. This way, I'm holding the remains that go right into the garden trash. No mess in the garden bed at all. When you see any stiff brown stems, stop and pick those out. Most will come up readily. You might need to gently tug on a few of them. Finally, continue cutting the leaves down to just a few inches tall. In the fall, I will keep any remaining flowers, just because. Check out this before and after shot. It's such a huge difference and only takes a few minutes per plant once you get the hang of it. So I hope this video helps you understand the difference between deadheading and pruning your daylilies. And more importantly, I hope it helped you to see how to properly deadhead your daylilies to keep the plants focused on producing more flowers instead of more seed pods. Until next time, happy gardening.